complete, which is section 1.1 .1 in the BJU Precalculus textbook. So we're going to learn how to draw an angle in standard position. We're going to convert between degree and radian measures. We're also going to use a formula to calculate arc length using angle measure and radius length. And then we're also um, in the homework problems, you will see a formula for distance and midpoint, and you're going to use those. So that's a review from Algebra 2. So first, let's start with a definition. We, if we have an angle in what's called standard position, and that's if the angle is created using the positive x-axis as its initial ray and the origin as its vertex. So think of the coordinate plane and think of where the x-axis is. So that's where the initial ray of your angle is and the origin of your angle is its vertex. Okay, so here we go, coordinate plane. So notice that our x-axis is our initial ray and the origin of the coordinate plane is our vertex of our angle. And then of course we'll have a terminal ray because that's what will make it an angle. And that's what we have for standard position. So here's a standard position that's 60 degrees because it's going counterclockwise. If we're going clockwise, we're going to go negative. So in this case, we have negative 120 degrees. Here's a positive 80 degrees. So we have what are called coterminal angles. And those are angles that are in standard position with the same terminal ray. So an if you go around the coordinate plane one complete time, you are at 360 degrees. Coterminal angles is what happens when you add 360. So for example, 10 degrees plus 360 is 370 degrees. So we're saying that 10 degrees and 370 degrees are coterminal because they're at the same exact position, even though one is 10 and one is 370, they are in the same standard position with the same terminal ray. So here you can see we started with 80 degrees and our co-terminal angle for 80 degrees is what happens when you add 360 and we get 440. Now you can have as many co-terminal angles as you would like. Um, it depends on your, um, your interval, like how far you want to go. You can also go negative. You can get negative co-terminal angles by subtracting 360. Our next definition is radian. So radian comes from the idea of a radius. It's the measure of an angle formed by two radii. So remember radii are going to be radiuses, the plural of radius. So we have two radii that are forming an angle of a circle so that the intercepted arc has a length equal to the radius of the circle. So it's almost like you're looking at an equilateral triangle, except for that third side is an arc. So it's not necessarily um, a straight, a triangle. So here we go. Here's our two radii. Here's our first radii. And here's our second radii. Okay, and they, the intercepted arc right here, the length of that intercepted arc is congruent or the same as the radius, it's the same length. So the measure of angle ABC is one radian. Whenever an angle measure is given and it doesn't say degrees as the unit, it's going to be in measured in radians. So it's another unit of measurement. If it doesn't have a little degree symbol, if it doesn't say degrees, then that means that we are in radians. Next, let's talk about the unit circle. 
the unit circle has its center at the origin with a radius of one unit. So the length of the radius is one unit. So here's our unit circle. So notice that the length right here is one, okay? Because a unit circle has a radius of one. And since this is our initial ray, that means our y value is zero, so we actually can get an ordered pair one comma zero. One comma zero. If we were to go around the unit circle, this would still have a length of one for its radius, so this would be zero comma one. Over here, we would move to negative one comma zero, and then down here, we would have zero comma negative one. Now we can convert between degrees and radians by setting up a proportion. So the number of radians over the degree is equal to pi over 180. So we substitute the known measure and solve for the other measure. So if they give us radians, we're going to put that here. And if they give us degrees, we're going to put that here. And then we we use a proportion by cross multiplying to solve, okay? So think of it like this. Pi goes with radians, 180 goes with degrees, and so whatever you have on top, make sure that's on top as well. Let's look at an example. Let's change 60 degrees to radians. So here, they give us degrees. So we're gonna put 60 where the degrees goes for M. So now we have n over 60 equals pi over 180. We're going to cross multiply to get n times 180 equals 60 pi. Now we're going to divide both sides by 180. We're going to simplify that fraction. So we get pi over 3, which is approximately 1.05. However, we don't want to get approximate answers anymore. We actually want to leave it as just pi over 3, pi over 3. Let's change 5.6 radians to degrees. So we're going to put 5.6 where it is. We're going to cross multiply. We get 5.6 times 180 equals m times pi. So again, we cross multiplied. Now we're going to solve for m. So we're going to multiply 5.6 by 180 and divide it by pi, and we get 320.9, approximately. Let's find the measures of uh, theta in degrees and radians. So here we are, here's theta, and we are all the way to the, where we started at the x-axis and we went to the positive y-axis, okay? So if this was an entire circle, we're looking at one-fourth of a circle. We're looking at one-fourth of a circle. Well, we know that an entire circle is 360 degrees. So one-fourth of 360 is 90 degrees. Well, now we can convert 90 degrees um, into radians. But if we think about it, the entire circle is 2 pi, 2 pi. And so if the entire circle is 2 pi, and we're one-fourth of the circle, when one-fourth of 2 is pi over 2. And so that's what we have for radians. Now let's go all the way down here. This is 3 fourths of a circle. So 3 fourths of 360 is 270. The those angles that we were finding the degrees and the radians for, those are what we call quadrantal, quadrantal angle. And that's where the terminal ray lies on one of the axes. So here's our first quadrantal angle, which is 90 degrees. Our second one, which is 180. Our third one, which is 270.
And then here's our fourth one. We can either consider that zero or we can also consider it 360. Next, let's talk about concentric circles. So concentric circles have the same center, but they have different lengths of radii. We also have something called a central angle, which is an angle having its vertex at the center of a circle. So here's one circle. In fact, this circle has a radius of one, which tells us this is actually the unit circle. Here's another circle. We don't know what its radius is. We don't know what its radius is. Um, however, we know that its initial ray is on the x-axis, so we know the y value is zero. And we're going to just let r be the length of the radius for the smaller circle. So notice that these two circles are concentric because they have the same origin. The origin is actually the origin of the coordinate plane. And here we have an angle that we're going to call alpha. And we want to try to figure out what the, um, what the measure of alpha is, what the measure of that angle is. And then we have S, which is the arc length. And then we have T, which is the arc length of the bigger circle. So from geometry, we can prove that the ratio of the arc length of two concentral angles is the same as the ratio of the radii. So we're going to set up proportions, right? So we have a ratio of arc length. So here was the one arc length, and here was the second one. And we're going to set that equal to the ratio of the radii. So we have r over 1, because 1 was the unit circle. Okay, so then we solve for s, and we, we get s equals r times t, where s is the arc length, r is the radius, and t is the angle measure. So when you're solving for t, the angle measure, know that you're solving it in radians. So if you get a problem where they give you degrees and not radians, you're going to have to convert it to radians before you can use this formula. So to sum up that formula, the length of any arc equals the product of its radius and angle measure in radians. Let's try an example. Let's find the measure of the angle that cuts off an arc length of 8 in a circle with a radius 2. So we start with our, our formula s equals r times t, where s is the arc length, r is the radius, and t is the measure of the angle. Well, since the arc length is 8, we'll plug that in for s, and since the radius is 2, we'll plug that in for r. So now we have 8 equals 2 times t. Divide both sides by 2, and we can solve for t. t is equal to 4 radians. Let's try another example. Let's find the measure of the angle that cuts off an arc length of 7 inches, a, cir a circle of radius 4. So we're going to start with s equals r times t, and this time we're trying to find, find the measure of the angle. So we're trying to solve for t. We know that our arc length is 7, so we know that s is 7, and we know that radius is 4, so we know r equals 4. So if we divide both sides by 4, we get 1.75 radians. Let's try another one. Let's find the measure of the angle that cuts off an arc length of 8 in a circle of radius 5. So they tell us that the arc length is 8, so s is 8, and radius is 5, so r is 5. We divide both sides by 5, and we get t, or the angle measure, is 1.6 radians. And that's all we have for today.